Praise the Lord, my brothers and sisters. It is Wednesday night, um, which we have our Bible study here at Olive Grove Missionary Baptist Church. And we indeed are glad to have you with us on this evening. This evening, we're going to be coming out of the book of Romans, chapter 10, verses 1 through 13. And we're going to use it as a subject, accepting Christ. You know, in society today, we hear all kinds of things, and people tell you, uh, you don't need church, you don't need, uh, Christ isn't real, and God ain't real, it's something that man had fixed in their imagination, and, and we, tonight we're going to be dealing with accepting uh, what the Word of God says about Christ and Jesus, or, or what the Word of God says about the Father. Uh, at this time, we're going to go into Romans 10, verses 1 through 13. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for the day and allowing us to see another week, Lord. Another Wednesday night, Lord, we, we can learn more about you, Lord, and how you can shine a light on your word, Lord. So, Lord, we're asking, Lord, that you're behind everything, Lord, that is hindering us on tonight from hearing a word from you, Lord, that our minds and our hearts may be open to you on this evening. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen and amen. My brothers and sisters, I'm really excited on tonight. Uh, this is a very well-known scripture um, here in Romans 10. And it begins uh, with, with Paul writing. He says, in the first verse, he says, Brother, my heart desire and prayer uh, to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Uh, for I bear them record, for I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, going about uh, to establish their own righteousness, have submitted themselves unto the have, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. My brothers and sisters, this is one reason why the church and we as God's people uh, fall uh, by the wayside because we go about establishing what is right and what is not right, not according to the word, but by according to our own knowledge. We know that God chose the, uh, the Jews in the Old Testament as his chosen people. But they left God, and they, they began to worship idol gods, and, and God would send war, and he would send the death angel, he would send different things to kind of turn them around. And he even sent Christ uh, to, to, to redeem man back to himself uh, because they had left and began to establish their own righteousness or began to establish how they think. You know how we say in today's society, how we think church is supposed to go. We don't want to do it the way grandmama did it or mama did it or daddy did it. Or, uh, we think in uh, the old time of churches are, 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 are primitive or, or they're lacking in some way or another. But God has established certain things to be. And tonight we're going to be dealing with what God has established and, and through Christ Jesus. And we're also going to be uh, coming out of uh, 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, verses 1 through 4. And, and, Paul, and, and in his letter to Timothy, he says, I charge you therefore uh, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and, and his kingdom. Preach the word, instance in season, out of season, rebuke. Uh, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time shall come when um, they will not en endure sound doctrine, but rather uh, their own lust, and shall heed to themselves teachers having itchy ears, and they shall turn away their uh, their ears from the truth, and shall turn to unto fables. Truly, we've seen this in our lifetime how God's people have turned. And they, they have created a, their own God, their own false God. They're sitting in church, and, 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 but they're not going according to what the Word says. Um, they, they do uh, create their own teachers, and they, they send them to school, and they, they come back and they teach what they uh, think the people want them to hear. They become uh, what we call, uh, in a sense, a mot motivational speaker. Uh, somebody that just helps you along in life to, to make your life better, but they're not getting you closer to God. They're just making life seem more easier by telling you whatever you want to do is all right. As far as the sex, the drugs, the, the, the alcohol, or, or whatever uh, the Bible tells us to abstain from, uh, 
Um, the motivational speakers tells us it's, it's all right. And we have a lot of motivational speakers in churches, and we, uh, some of them are pastors, some of them are ministers, but we need preachers that's going to preach the word in season, out of season, just as uh, he's telling Timothy here in 2 Timothy 4, or we'll be ignorant. As he wrote to Romans in Romans 10, he says in the third verse, For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, going about establishing their own righteousness, having not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. Just because you belong at a church or your family created a church and your, your father or your mother or somebody may be pastoring that church, you have to submit yourselves unto God. They cannot save you. Uh, the saving process comes between you and Christ. Christ standing at the door knocking. He's standing at the door. No man can come to the Father but by him. And so tonight I want you to understand that without Christ, there is no access to heaven. According to the way we read the Bible and interpret the Bible. There is no access to the blessings of God. Until you meet Christ on your road of Damascus, until you meet Christ, in, in, in the pardon of your sin, you cannot be that which God has for you to be until you start accepting Christ. And the fourth verse here in uh, Romans, Romans uh, 10, it says, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believe. You have to believe that he was sent by God. You have to believe that he is our redeemer. You have to believe that he is the Christ. You have to believe that he is the Messiah. You have to believe that he is our Lord and our Savior. You have to believe that he's interceding on our behalf on the right hand of the Father in heaven. You have to believe that he is it. There's no other way. You know, uh, today is the day society. We think of many different ways because we know all about the different religions and but we're not here to teach you about those religions. We're here to teach you about Jesus the Christ. I know what they teach you in college. I know uh, about your co-workers or, or some of your family members may be of a different uh, religion. But we are here to teach you about Jesus the Christ because we believe that there is no other way. And this is what Paul is teaching us on this evening. In the fifth verse he says, For Moses described... Uh, the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which does these those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith, speaking on this wise, say not in thine heart who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring Christ again from the dead. We, we, we have to understand that Christ is the only way and we have to acknowledge that we sometimes make our own righteousness but we must repent and get back to the righteousness that God has, has, has brought uh, through Christ Jesus because none of us can live right. None of us can be righteous outside of the blood of Jesus, outside of that sacrifice that he made on the cross for all of our sins. The whole world sins, but there are some things that he, we have to do to be accepted into his kingdom. And first thing and foremost is acknowledging who he is. And once we acknowledge who he is, as we read uh, in our lesson, uh, in, in these next passages, uh, we must live according to to what the word tells us to live by. We can't go around and say this is this is, is better than that. Well, at least I'm not doing what they did over there. Sin is sin. And sin will get you into hell. If we don't change from the way we live, if we follow in Christ, then there ought to be a change in our life. In Matthew 5 and 17, and, and verses 17 and 20, Jesus says, Think not that I come to destroy the law. He didn't come to do away with the law uh, or the prophets. I have not come to destroy, but to fulfill. That was written in the Old Testament. He, he 
fulfilled. And then he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one little shell, no wise, no wise pass from the law, till it be, till all be fulfilled. Who shall will break one of these uh, least commandments and shall teach men so? He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you, except, the, except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter in to the kingdom of heaven. Then it might be, uh, you might think, well, he's putting something on the scribes and Pharisees. He, he's telling them they are not where they're supposed to be. Strides and Pharisees are God's chosen people. They were Jews. But they wasn't where they were supposed to be. They didn't accept Christ, so they can't make it into the kingdom of heaven. This is what, this is what uh, 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 Jesus is saying here to his disciples. Until you make a connection with the true Father, until you make a connection with the true righteousness of God, which was him, which is him, then you won't make it in the kingdom of heaven. You got to have more than just the law to get you there. And then he says uh, in verse 8, he said, What it what said? The word is not thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. If thou shalt confess, and I think a lot of people get tripped up over this, this, this scripture right here, but we're gonna take a little time tonight on this scripture right here. He says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and everybody is willing to, to say that, but they are not willing to live for him. And then it says, and, and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Then he says in verse 9, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. My brothers and sisters, I want to take a little time to tell you what confession versus repentance is. Because we got to have both of them. I think a lot of people stop at the confession part. Well, a confession is when an individual acknowledges his wrongdoing. When a criminal get caught, they want him to confess. They want him to fess up or confess, make a confession of what he or she has done. That's more easy than repentance. Repentance, repentance is, on the other hand, refers to a feeling of remorse about something. And so if we confess our sins and we're not sorry that we did it, what good is the confession? The Bible is going to tell us in, in, in the scriptures to come the confession is unto salvation. What good is the confession if you're going to keep on doing what you're doing? You make the blood of Jesus not effect to you. And that's when the enemy comes in and he attacks you in your mind and your thought pattern to make you feel like you're right because you told somebody you did something wrong. Well, we all are wrong. All have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. But when we have true repentance in our heart, we turn from our wicked way and accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And we begin to walk the righteous walk of life. I'm not talking about keeping the religious rigids. I'm not talking about uh, uh, trying to toe the line. In the book of Amos, they talk about toeing the line. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about staying with Jesus and allowing the Holy Spirit to come into your life that it can teach you and bring you up out of your confession. Whatever you're doing wrong in your life, he can bring you up out of that. Once you truly repent of it, then he can help you to stop doing it or walking inside of whatever you, you've been doing in life. It takes more than just a confession. A lot of people come to church and they'll testify about what they did on last week or how they, they done certain things or said the wrong thing. But then Monday comes. And they go back and they do the exact same thing over and over. My brothers and sisters, we are better than that. Our God that we serve uh, set his Holy Spirit down so, so that we can attain the truth of our life. 
And the truth about life is that we don't have any excuses anymore because the Holy Spirit is here to seal us, to lead us, to guide us, to empower us from the inside out. And then he says in verse uh, 15, he says, uh, I'm sorry, in John 14, 15 verses, verses 15 through 21, uh, Jesus, then this is what Jesus is saying again. Jesus said, if you love me, he told uh, his disciples, if you, or Peter, he told them, if you love me, keep my commandments. And then he said, I will pray to the Father, and he shall give you another comfort, that he may abide with you forever. And then it says, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it sees him not, neither knows him, but ye know him, for he dwells with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you confidence. I will come to you. So we have no excuse to continue to do things and, and make those vain confessions that we really, uh, we, we just think we're getting the weight of off of us when we confess it. But when we, we're really not God for, God, God really sorrowful for what we've done. God wants your heart. He don't want your confession. He wants your heart because he knows what's in that heart. He knows those hidden places. We have to open up and allow him to come in. Because if we don't and we hide our hearts from God, the enemy already has us. <laughs> he don't have to do anything because we do it to ourselves. And so we, we need to be thankful that God sent his Holy Spirit to lead and guide us. And then in verse, in verse 10, in Romans 10, he says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, Whosoever believe on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference in the Jews and the Greeks. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Who shall ever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. My brothers and sisters, regardless of what race you are, if you believe in Jesus the Christ, regardless of what gender you are, if you believe in Jesus the Christ and you're willing to, to confess your sins and repent of your sins and change and let God change you through the Holy Spirit and through his word, then you shall have a right to eternal life. You shall be in the kingdom of God because Jesus shall bring you in there through the Holy Spirit. And so we want you to understand that you don't have to uh, uh, be walking around sleep, being drunk with the spirit of this world, not with the flesh that drink, but with the spirit of this world that tells you you are all right just as you are. Uh, start living your best life. The only way you're going to live your best life is through Christ Jesus, and you shall be saved. This is a promise that Christ made, that we will be with him, and, and he shall be with us. And so we understand tonight that a lot of things are coming our way in America. A lot of things have come our way in the last two or three years in, in our past. But God has been with us through it all. And as long as we stay with Christ, as long as we stay doing what the Word of God tells us to do, as long as we can continue to, to fast and pray and meditate on His Word and allow the Spirit to grow inside of us, we're going to be all right. No matter what comes or what goes, we're going to be all right. So I hope you enjoyed our lesson on this evening, Romans 10. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you found some understanding on the night. And we just thank the Lord for you. We're going to have a word of prayer, and then we're going to close out. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for the night. We thank you, Lord, for your spirit. And we thank you, Lord, for the sacrifice that was made for us. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the blessings that you shower down upon us, whether we're good or bad. You give us a breath of life, Lord. And that is the, the ultimate breath, uh, blessing that we have right now, Lord, that you allow us to live to get right. And then we just thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus that continue to cover us. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Good night.